Hey YouTube, Justin here again, AK Demonic Sweaters, with another video about this Smart Wave 2 Plus MIDI adapter unit that I picked up uh, recently that allows you to sample your own sounds and play them with your electronic drum kit, even if it doesn't support that. If you saw my first video, you may remember that I was having some issues with the snare drum cutting out after playing for about five minutes or so. So what I did is I went in and I reformatted the SD card uh, basically like a low level format where I turned off quick format and just you know took about 10 minutes to really format it like zero out the entire thing and then I went in and I created a whole new sample set from my Tama Imperial Star drums and 16-bit stereo samples and then I also mapped everything to my Roland TD8 module now it does seem to be working pretty good now as far as I can tell um, one of the things I do want to mention is I do hear a little bit of noise uh, with the samples when you play back it's not too bad you don't really notice it actually until the noise stops like after you stop playing um, and you probably won't even notice it if you're recording a song uh, so it's really not that bad latency is very good uh, like or the lack of latency is very good it's a little bit hard to get everything set up correctly you know and get all the levels right and everything and some of my levels are still a little bit off i could do some fine tuning on the ride and the toms and stuff like that uh, and there's a couple other little things I wanted to mention about it. But first, let me give you guys some playing. And before I do that, let's talk about my sponsor, which is Pure VPN. Facebook, Google, all these companies track you online all the time. They basically know everything you're doing online. If you want to get online securely and not have your ISP and Google and Facebook and all these companies knowing everything you do online all the time, privacy is a big concern these days. You want to go through a VPN service. So Pure VPN can do that for you. So check the link down below for some special pricing. Anyway, let me go ahead and play a little bit and, uh, and then I'll talk about some of my other thoughts about the SmartWave 2 MIDI adapter. Okay, so a couple things you might have noticed there while I was playing is sometimes a sample just sort of cuts off 
uh, prematurely, basically as it's ringing out. And the reason why I think this is, is probably because the amount of polyphony that is available on the unit itself. Polyphony is basically how many notes you can play at once on a MIDI device. And my guess is maybe this one only has, you know, eight or 16 or something like that. So if I keep playing it, you know, eventually we'll cut off one of the previous notes as it's ringing out. Now this could really bother some people if you're trying to use this in a professional uh, type of recording situation. So that's really up to you. Now the other thing that is a little bit weird about this device is when you have it in multi-sample mode, the velocity is purely controlled by the samples. And what I mean by that is say you have four different samples for my snare drum and all four of those are the same volume, every snare hit that you hit will be the same volume unless you have those samples already pre-registered to the volume you want them to be. Basically, so if you're doing sample snare sample A, B, C, and D, you have to have your snare sample that you hit the quietest also be the quietest in level on the actual audio file, or all of them will play the same exact level, which can sound really, really strange. That was something that I did at first when I was first making my sample set for these, and it sounded really weird. So I had to go back in and re-edit all the samples to make them the correct velocities. If you're playing in single layer mode, then you don't need to worry about that, and it does seem to adjust the velocities appropriate, appropriately for each sample. So that is one thing that's a little bit of a drawback, in my opinion, and also, you have to really get all of your levels, you know, perfect based on the samples themselves before you load them on the device. Once you have them on the device, there's really nothing you can do about the levels. Uh, they're just going to be as loud as they are. Uh, there's no real individual volume control for each sample within the, within the actual unit itself. That's all done in the sample editing process. So one way you could maybe avoid having these troubles to begin with is basically record, if you record from acoustic drums, record yourself playing those drums before the individual hits. Get a good mix of them all, you know, basically playing, and then go through and chop up your individual samples, and so everything will already be set at the correct levels. And that would probably be the best and most efficient way to do it if you were creating your own samples uh, to use on this device. Now, is it worth it? Does it really allow you to add extra sounds to your drum module? Kinda, I mean, it's, it's really up to you. I think it's a cool thing, um, and I'm glad I bought it, but it's not gonna be for everybody. This device isn't gonna work for, you know, if you're looking for something, you know, basically where you can just drag and drop samples on it and it's just gonna figure out what to do, this is not the device. You have to do a lot of tweaking, you have to get in, you know, and edit some, you know, file names and folder structures and all of that. You also have to make sure that all the levels are correct, like I was saying before. So it's a pretty nerdy little thing. now. I think it's cool though, and I still plan on using it. Like what I want to do is actually create some really weird, you know, drum set, drum sets basically that I can have on here and store them, maybe play them with my drum cap, which what I was trying originally. Um, so, you know, it's cool. It just really depends on what you want to do. You know, if you're into experimenting, uh, you'll probably like it. If you don't want to mess with stuff like that, and you just want good sounds, then you probably won't. You'd probably be better off with using a VST plugin like Superior Drummer or Easy Drummer 2 or something like that. So anyway, that's my thoughts. I think it's really cool, uh, but it's not for everyone, but it is for me. So anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to check out my music on Spotify. There's a link down below, follow me. I have a new album coming out on December 4th, which I think is gonna be really good. And I think you guys are gonna like it a lot. So anyway, Thanks for watching everybody and have a great day. Later.